Hi everyone and welcome back to Octopus Builds. My name is Bob Walker and I am the Technical Director of Customer Success here at Octopus Deploy. And we are going to continue building out the fictional Trident project for our sample company, Octopet Shop. So if you tuned in last week or in the previous episode, uh, you saw that we built out our four environments, dev, QA, staging, and production. We created our project, and we have added in our simple step to verify the connectivity. So in today's episode, we're going to be changing up the deployment process. We're going to be configuring uh, a mail notification, and we're going to show how to deploy a package. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. so. Trident team has put together their first initial package and they got some workings going on but they want to verify that everything is is working correctly before they kind of set up the final uh, build server to Octopus Deploy uh, and configuration. So what they've done is they have uploaded a package trident.web and they just op uploaded version 00.1 and you can do that if you want on your own by just uploading any sort of zip file to here that then Octopus Deploy can uh, deploy for you. And what they want to do is they want to have this deployment process push out that package. They're still landing on what exactly the deployment is, 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 is that, excuse me, the actual um, hosting platform will be? Well, is it going to be Linux? Is it going to be uh, Windows, is it be iOS or Nginx? Not too super concerned with that. But let's go ahead and let's switch up our deployment process. So we don't want to have this simple verify connectivity step. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And let's add in a new step. Now, all I'm going to be doing for this is deploying a package. With deploying a package, the interesting thing about this is that it is the kind of like the base step that so many other steps uh, build on top of, specifically uh, deploy Windows Service, deploy IIS, uh, as well as a few other ones that are out there. So even though we're just going to be deploying a package today, uh, you can easily replace this with whatever step you want to do for whatever target you want to do. But for purposes of this uh, demonstration, all we're going to be doing is we just want to deploy trident.web. And we want to run this on the Trident Web web server. Um, and then come in here and we're going to select our package. Notice that we're not selecting a version. We're just going to be selecting the package ID or the package name. Uh, we do not have any .NET configuration transforms. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off because let's not waste time doing that type of stuff. Eventually, we're going to be doing some variable replacement, but not today. And let's just verify everything else. Run for any environment, success. Yep, that all looks good. All righty. So let's go ahead and create a brand new release. Now, one thing that's interesting about creating a release is that it snapshots everything about that release, from your variables to the deployment process, as well as the package version. Now, you notice that I have version 00.2, and I'm going to be deploying package 00.1. Uh, for the next couple episodes, probably expect to see version 00.1 to be continuously deployed as I kind of build out this deployment process. And that's fine, especially for this purposes of this demonstration. Eventually, we'll have the version numbers match up, but just not today. So let's go ahead and save this. And I just want to deploy this to dev. Let's just make sure that everything is going to work as we expect. It's going to deploy to my, my target. And let's go ahead and push this out. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to, on this particular case, it's going to acquire those packages. So that's going to take a little while to finish up. So while we finish this acquiring the packages and deploying the web, um, what we also want to do is the Trident team, the developers have come to have come to me and they've asked me to also set up an email notification. And especially in these early days, they want to be notified for any deployment that's out there. And they want to, regardless of the status, they want to know if it's failed or, if it's, or successful. And this is fairly common for a lot of other customers that I've worked with, especially when you're building out the deployment process for the very first time. 
there's going to be a lot of back and forth. You're trying out different things. Something's working, something's not working. You want to be notified right away. So again, while we're waiting for this to finish up, because it has to do some behind the scenes stuff while it's spinning up some of my infrastructure, let's go ahead and configure our SMTP server. Now for this series, I'm gonna be using MailTrap. And if you haven't used MailTrap before, it's a great service out there to test out your email functionality. And so let's just do, uh, let's do 587. That's one of the options that they give us. Uh, I want to use SSL and I'm just going to say from octopus at octopetshop.com. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. In the real world, you would definitely have an actual uh, username and pat. You would actually have like a legitimate email address to come from. So. Uh, with MailTrap, you have to populate, they give you like the SMTP login as well as any sort of credentials. So let's go ahead and save and test. And let's send this out to myself. Now this isn't actually gonna send an email to me. The whole point of MailTrap is it does exactly what it says on the tin, where it will send out an email and it's gonna get trapped. So if I come over, if I do come over to my MailTrap IO, I can see it pop up. So great, everything was sent successfully. Happy days. Let's take a look at our dashboard. All right, so version 002 to development has finished deploying. So now we can come back here and we can make some changes to our deployment process. Because what we want to do is we also want to send out an email notification now that we know that this package can be successfully deployed. You might have noticed back there that um, it actually didn't do anything. And that's again, because I'm using cloud region targets. Um, in the earlier episode, I went in and created a cloud region target. It's kind of a pseudo target, just there again to demonstrate Octopus Deploy functionality. Uh, I'm really more focused in on the Octopus Deploy server itself and not so much with the actual deployment targets right now. But uh, we'll get into that, we'll get into that. Let's go ahead and we want to send out an email. So we're gonna send an email and I'm just gonna say, notify developers of status. All right, so from here, we get pretty much all the same stuff. If you're very familiar with ever sending out an email, that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna make this simple for right now, and I'm just gonna set up, I'm just gonna have this send it over to myself. All right, let's talk about the subject line, because we do need to provide a subject line, and I have one that I have already pre-configured over in another location. So within Octopus Deploy, it has the ability to replace text using variables, and it uses this syntax called Octostash, and that's what this syntax is. And so what it's saying is replace this value with the actual project name. So it would replace this value with Trident. It'd replace it with the next release number, which will be 00.3, as well as the environment. In addition to that, we can have some logic inside of here that says if something, if there was ever an error or has failed or anything like that, we need to know about it. Otherwise, it's completed successfully. Um, so you can kind of have one email step handle all of the different uh, deployment scenarios that are out there. I'm also going to add in a body. And again, I'm using Octostash to kind of build this out. Now you might be wondering, what are all the variables that are available to me? Now if you come over to our documentation and you search for system variables, you know, get presented with this screen. I come here all the time. I'm surprised I don't have this dang thing bookmarked. But what this will detail is all of the system variables that are available to you that you can use in an email step that you can use for other reasons like a script step or even including as part of your package, which we'll, I'll show you how to do that in future episodes. But uh, these are all the system variables that are available to you. So as you can imagine, it gets quite extensive uh, that's out there. Uh, and this also does a really good job of explaining um, what will what it will look like to you, as well as giving you kind of a good na uh, description as to what this variable is. In addition to that, you don't have to memorize these things. We also provide a handy dandy drop down list where you can come in and you can search. So as you can imagine, these are a number of different variables that are available to us right now. 
Now I'm going to change this up to always run instead of running just on success or failure because this has the capability to handle either or. And again, we go back to the scenario where the development team right now they want to be notified no matter what happens uh, if this deployment was successful or not. So let's go ahead and let's save this. Now one thing I want to point out is I've added a second step to my process and I've also changed around my step. If I were to come here and I would say hey I want to deploy this to QA what you're gonna see is that it did not pick up that other step and that's because again it goes back to what was snapshotted when you create that release the deployment process is snapshotted as well as the package version and any variables associated with that release are snapshotted and it's very important that you know that because that is one of the key features of octopus deploy is how you deploy to dev and how you deploy to test and or QA and staging is the exact same way of how we're going to deploy to production. So by the time this release makes it up to production, which it's not going to for today, by the time it gets up there, it has been tested and verified at least three times. So it hasn't, we haven't, we're not going to have any surprises when we go out to production at this point. We know how it's going to behave. The only type of thing that could potentially happen is maybe we have a connection string variable uh, misconfigured or anything like that. But for this particular release, probably not going to have any problems. So we want to verify that the email gets sent out correctly and let's go ahead and let's create a new version and let's deploy this to dev. So now we see the new step has been created and I think my package might be pretty pretty big I think it's uh, about 20, 20 megs Good, it's already found in the cache, yay. So, shouldn't take too much longer. Okay, it has finished running that one. And so now, yep, it has already deployed it. It's not gonna do anything again, because I'm just using cloud region targets. It's gonna say it's not doing anything, and that's perfectly fine. Um, as you are working on your actual deployment process, it, it will actually do a deployment, but again, I just wanted to demonstrate on how to configure it and how to set it up. And we want to notify the status of the deployment. And so it has sent the email. And let's pull over our screen and let's take a look at it. So we can click here. It has Trident 003 to development has completed successfully. And we can view the deployment here. So if I wanted to, I could copy this URL, open up a new tab, paste it, and boom we have the, the link. So everything is working as we expect. So that is it for this episode. In the next episode, what we're going to be configuring is some configuration replacement variables. And we'll talk through that and what that is in just in the next episode. So you can kind of see how you can take advantage of variables, variable scoping, and how all that works. Because uh, it doesn't really you don't really see it until you have a chance to actually do a, a, a deployment of a package. So thank, again, thank you very much for joining me. And if you have any ideas of different scenarios you'd like me to cover as I sl start building out this deployment process more and more, please drop them in a comment below. I'd love to hear more from you. And thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.